So I watched the Kung Fu Panda trilogy for the first time and the movies are amazing, but the things that make them so good for me are the villains. They stand in a league of their own and are what drive the story forward and push Poe forward on his journey to become a Kung Fu master in the Dragon Warrior. But what's up before that? If you like this video and you like this type of content, then be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more. But with all that out of the way, why don't we just dive right on in. So starting off, we have the first Kung Fu Panda and we have Tai Lung. Now Tai Lung's character is a tragic tale of prodigious talent corrupted by unbridled ambition. His journey from being the adopted son of Master Shifu to a formidable adversary is marked by a combination of personal inadequacies and external circumstances. The main aspect of his character is his fall into darkness, which is rooted in his desire for recognition and validation. As a young snow leopard, he excelled in Kung Fu under the rigorous training of Shifu. However, the lack of acknowledgement and the promise of the Dragon Scroll fueled his growing resentment. The need for external validation became his undoing, as it transformed into an insatiable hunger for power. The relationship between him and Shifu adds layers to the tragedy, though. Shifu, blinded by his own pride and desire for Tai Lung to fulfill the prophecy, fails to see the warning signs of his protege's growing darkness. The relationship between Shifu and Tai Lung shows the mentor-student dynamic in becoming a cautionary tale about the responsibilities of guiding and nurturing talent, which highlights the dangers of neglecting the emotional well-being of those under one's care. The Dragon Scroll becomes the embodiment of Tai Lung's fixation. His belief that possessing it would finally bring him the recognition he craves blinds him to the true essence of Kung Fu. The irony lies in the scroll's emptiness, a reflection of the internal void Tai Lung fails to fill. His obsession with the scroll symbolizes the peril of seeking external validation rather than finding fulfillment within oneself. And then in the final battle between him and Po, it's not just a physical clash but a showdown of ideologies, Tai Lung's inability to understand that power lies within rather than in external artifacts becomes his downfall. His defeat serves as a poignant reminder of the consequences of succumbing to the dark allure of power and the importance of balance in one's pursuit of greed. Next is Kung Fu Panda 2 and Lord Shen, which is my personal favorite villain. Shen's character is defined by a deep-seated fear of the past and an unwavering determination to alter his destiny. His, his descent into madness is driven by an inability to accept the circumstances surrounding his birth and an obsessive desire to control the future. Shen's fear is rooted in a prophecy foretold by the Soothsayer. The prophecy, which predicts his downfall at the hands of a warrior, becomes an all-encompassing shadow over his life. Shen's defiance to accept the inevitability of this fate drives him to drastic measures. The Soothsayer, a voice of reason, serves as a counterpoint highlighting the destructive consequences of denying one's destiny. And Shen's response to the prophecy is to invent a weapon that will reshape the world and render Kung Fu obsolete. The canon becomes a metaphor for his desire to control uncontrollable destiny itself. The destructive power of the weapon reflects Shen's internal turmoil and his willingness to sacrifice everything, including his own people, to avoid the fate he fears. And then with Shen's conflict with Poe, it becomes a battleground of ideologies. Poe embracing his destiny as the Dragon Warrior represents acceptance and growth. Shen, in contrast, symbolizes the consequence of denying and resisting fate. The clash between the two characters is not only physical, but also a clash of worldviews. With Poe embodying the wisdom of acceptance and Shen personifying the destructive force of defiance. And after Shen's defeat, he realized the prophecy was right and that he couldn't change destiny, but in the end, he accepts the outcome of what happened and accepts his death. And then in Kung Fu Panda 3 with Kai, and his main aspect is that he's driven by an insatiable obsession with power and desire for revenge. His character explores the cynical nature of power, the consequences of envy, and the possibility of redemption. Kai's journey begins with a sense of betrayal by Ugwe, his brother-in-arms. Envy festers within him as Ugwe ascends to the role of a wise leader, while Kai remains in the shadows. This envy transforms into an insatiable hunger for power, leading to the quest to steal the tree of Kung Fu masters and dominate both the mortal and spirit realms. Kai's ability to manipulate and control Chi sets him apart as a unique and formidable villain. His jade warriors, animated by stolen Chi, become tools of his vengeance. The manipulation of Chi serves as a metaphor for the corrupting influence of unchecked power and the dangers of using strength for destructive purposes. Kai's tie to Ugwe is central to his character development. The once close relationship devolves into a bitter rivalry, with Kai becoming a dark reflection of Ugwe's teachings. Ugwe Ugwe's legacy represented by the teachings that continue to guide Poe become a source of redemption. Kai's journey, while mired in darkness, suggests a possibility of breaking the cycle through self-awareness and willingness to change. The confrontation between Poe and Kai transcends the physical realm, delving into the spiritual dimensions of Kung Fu. Poe's realization of the significance of his own journey and the teachings of Ugwe becomes the catalyst for facing Kai. The battle becomes a clash not only of physical prowess but also of spiritual resilience and the enduring legacy of wisdom. 
All three villains are characterized by their depth and complexity. Tai Lung's tragic fall from grace, Shen's descent into madness, and Kai's journey of redemption showcase the filmmaker's commitment to crafting multifaceted antagonists. Each character is a product of their past, shaped by their choices and relationship. While Tai Lung's story revolves around the consequences of unchecked ambition, Shen's narrative explores the ramification of denying fate, and Kai's arc delves into the dark nature of power and redemption. The diversity of motives and themes across the trilogy adds richness to the storytelling, allowing each film to stand stand on its own while contributing to the overarching narrative. Tai Lung, Shen, and Kai serve as perfect foils to Poe, representing different aspects of his journey. Tai Lung challenges Poe's perception of self-worth and the true meaning of the Dragon Scroll. Shen pushes Poe to confront the inevitability of destiny and the importance of embracing one's identity and past. Kai as a spirit reinforces the spiritual aspects of Kung Fu and the enduring legacy of wisdom. But what I think is the coolest part is that each villain is tied to a specific character. Tai Lung is tied to Shifu. Shifu saw potential in Tai Lung, raised him as his own son. This relationship adds layers of emotional complexity to the conflict. Tai Lung's betrayal is not only a personal blow to Shifu, but also an exploration of the pitfalls of blind mentorship. Shifu's journey involves coming to terms with his own failures and realizing the importance of balance in guiding a student. And then with Shen, he's tied to Po. Shen's connection to Po is deeply rooted in their shared destiny. Both characters grapple with the weight of prophecies, but their responses differ drastically. While Poe embraces his destiny as the Dragon Warrior, Shen attempts to defy and control his fate. Their contrasting approaches highlights the film's theme of acceptance and the inevitability of destiny. Poe's growth lies in his ability to confront and reconcile with his past, a lesson Shen tragically fails to learn. And then there's Kai with his tie to Ugwe. They were once brothers in arms. Their relationship unravels due to Kai's lust for power. Ugwe's decision to banish Kai becomes a pivotal moment that shapes both characters' destinies. Ugwe, although absent physically, plays a crucial role in Poe's journey, acting as a guiding force from beyond, and Poe's realization of Ugwe's teaching becomes a linchpin in his confrontation with Kai. Overall, the villains are amazing. With Tai Lung's tragic fall, Shen's fear of the past, and Kai's obsession with power, it creates a tapestry of complex characters that serve as mirrors to the protagonists. The films explore the consequences of unchecked ambition, the destructive nature of denying destiny, and the obsessive pursuit of power. As Poe confronts these adversaries, he not only refines his kung fu skills but undergoes profound personal growth. The villains, intricately tied to mentors and pivotal moments in the protagonists' lives, contribute to the series as a whole. Kung Fu Panda stands as a testament to the the power of storytelling in animated cinema, where villains are not merely obstacles but vessels for exploring the human condition and the enduring quest for self-discovery and redemption, just basically meaning that Kung Fu Panda's villains are really fucking good. But that'll bring an end to this video. If you enjoyed the video, then be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. But with all that out of the way, I will see you all in the next one. Peace.